me to order. If um, Andrew shows up, where is he going to sit? Oh, he's sit right here. You can sit right here. Okay. Uh, I, I do not seem to be able to get on to. I get on to uh, what, what is, just what cable Wi Fi. Cable Wi Fi? Really? That was the first one that. Oh, wait, I'm getting something. Anyway, let me not let that hold you up. Did everyone get a copy of the um, minutes that Terry just sent out? Okay. Since there's no public comment time, I haven't, no. Uh, will you sandbox them? No, it's Verizon My Fire. Okay. A D A. In the past? For some reason, it's in the city. I'm sorry. And it's going to be a matter of public record. Yes. I'm going to show it to you. you it. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, while we're doing this, if you all can read the minutes and, and let me know if you have any suggestions. Okay. Oh, there's Yes. I took a set. I just want to, um, Terry, under tree warden report, again, I want that to say DCR grant approval update. Because I, I don't want there to be any impression that the right. might have got it um, approved. What was that again? Um, the tree warden right. report? Uh, that, that our, it was an update on the process of grant approval. Basically, the process was that it was favorably reviewed and it was moved up the food chain. Oh, okay. Okay. My apologies. No worries. Actually, and if it could be, if we could say that, just that it was, um, well, it's fine. It was moving through the process? Yes. It means that Molly and her, who was the other one? Julie? Julie. Yeah. Hi, Shade Tree Commission. Hey there, Just hey there. your service, as always. <laughs> Controversial motion I've ever made. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, all in favor of the um, minutes as amended? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Uh, abbreviated review of to-do list. Let's see if I can. Gmail. Are you able to pull that up for what? me on the oh. to-do list? Oh, I'm just having some. Yeah, let me get that for you. Has anyone heard from Andrew? He said he was going to be late. Okay. He sent a quick email. At the last minute? Okay. Yeah. All right. Like 4 30, I think he said. I see. Okay. Slowly opening. Yeah. 
things are really moving slowly. All right, I think I got it. Um, uh, who is the anonymous shrew? Huh? Who's the anonymous shrew? Is that you? Anonymous shrew? Is that yeah. the name of an of a No, it's it's uh, <laughs> There is, when they open up the, the to-do list, I can see your name, and then next to it is <laughs> Anonymous Shrew. Right Where are you? Oh, oh, I know what you're okay. talking right. about. So oh, yeah. Chat, uh, that right. might be me. Chat Maybe that's me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, I, oh, let's see. Uh, Sorry. The spring tree planting effort is underway, okay? Door hangers that uh, the content has been completed and sent to a des uh, graphic designer. Uh, so we actually can take that contact um, Smith School off. Okay, so I'll just get rid of that. Um, Was there a reason why you didn't go to the Smith School? Yeah, um, I just wanted, because we're, our deadline is coming up and I wanted to move swiftly yeah. and I have a graphic designer who I've worked with for five years and trust so much and he's willing to do it pro bono. Oh, so. there you go. He did all of the um, graphic work for Growth Food. Oh, nice. He's really yeah, good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he, well, he actually, we're probably going to get him on coffee once. So. He'll, he'll send them to where we ever we say to send it to, where, wherever the city right. gets. Um, okay, uh, let's see. Uh, all right, so that's any any anything that jumps out at folks on the to-do list? I don't think so. I think that's, this one could get done. The um, Interview questions have been submitted to the mayor. Actually, I'm gonna just move right into um, chair report on that note. Okay, so I did submit our three questions to the mayor and I did get conf confirmation that they were received. Um, and I also, I'm sure all of you have heard by now the sad news that Ned Huntley died. Um, so I did make a card on behalf of all of us and um, I'm gonna pass it around and invite you all to sign it. And what it says is, um, it's to his family, and it says, we're so saddened by the news of Ned's death. We're keeping your family in our hearts and we'll plant a tree in Ned's memory this spring. Was so, Ned, the, Ned was the former DPW director. Rich's boss for yeah. 10 years. Yeah. And he, um, he died of um, complications from a type of brain lymphoma, the lymphoma that goes into the brain. That was sad and shocking for me. All right, um, and then the, the last thing on my report is just that um, Todd and I had a, a really nice first visit with a man named Joel Russell, who is a, um, he's an urban land use planner as a profession, and he consults um, with a lot of municipalities uh, of our size all around New England. Um, and he uh, lives, he's a resident of Northampton. So we met with him in the, in, in the interest of exploring smarter overall design guidelines that support um, public trees. And he had some really good ideas and um, is willing in a very targeted capacity to support our effort for um, overall, pursuing overall better design standards for um, public street, street trees. And I felt really good about it. Todd, maybe you have a thing uh, or two to say to it, but I felt like it was a really important first step. And I know that I, um, I, feel, I feel very strongly that this is a very, very important aspect of our work. Todd, did you want to say anything about that? No, it was well summarized, I think. Um, yeah, you have some really good thoughts and uh, look forward to continuing the conversation. Moving yeah. Forward. yeah. Very, very introductory. Um, okay, so let's see if I have anything else. I think that's it for my chair report. Please, you're up. Uh, I don't really have a lot. The only thing I wanted to talk about is that uh, I did get an email back from Schichtel's Nursery in regards to the Mary plantings. Uh, and I have been exchanging emails with Jay and Rob about the uh, alternates. Um, that they have for us because they are, our first choices were not all available. So after this meeting is over, if you guys would have a few seconds just to talk to me about it, mm -hmm. that would be okay. And we can just pick from what is recommended on that list. And then we're actually going to have 25 carol trees yeah. instead of one. So, um, 
shipping is about 300 bucks. So I've got to figure out how much it, I'll, next meeting I'll know how it's all going to cost because I will be able to plug in all the numbers once we figure out which trees we're going to get. So, um, and the other uh, item is that uh, I got an email from Susan Wright uh, from the Department of Revenue and uh, the Department of Revenue confirmed what we already knew so that we cannot set up a separate fund for trees. Uh, they said all fines have to be treated as general fund revenue. As you know, we have set up a separate revenue account for the fines uh, on 1004-432023 tree warden account. This way they can be tracked. Uh, the mayor will adjust the tree replacement budget to reflect the additional revenue from the fines at budget time, which means that whatever monies we have deposited in there in a year's time come, come June 30th, or actually prior to June 30th when the budget is put together, the mayor will actually take that extrapolate that amount of money and actually put it in the, in the, in the DPW budget. So right now we have about $12,000 in there. So that would be in it. So this coming, um, if we don't need to transfer the money between now and July 1st, July 1, we will have $52,000 in that account. So that's how that's going to work. So that's a commitment from, from this administration. So going forward, we have to figure out a way to make that commitment stick, period. Yes, yeah. other administrations could change their. Do we need to tune. now? Is that money specifically earmarked for for tree planting? For trees, anything to do with trees. Anything to do with trees. Anything to do so with any if we trees. fell short of for money for our inventory or something oh. like that, we could go to it. Okay. Did some of that money come from fines and other things? Or uh, nine ninety five hundred came from fines, and the rest of it came from uh, mitigation, from uh, uh, tree removal. Removals. Uh, the other money is actually came from personal services for the public works employees to remove the trees. So there's a combination of funding sources. Did any money ever come from people making donations to the the gift fund? There, there. We have to get that. We have to go in front of council and get that money transferred. Oh, so that's a whole separate that's little. A whole separate and it's not much, right? Seven hundred bucks. Okay. Seven hundred dollars. Yeah. Okay. So, so that's kind of how that's going to work for the time being. But at least we have some. A tracking mechanism, so it's just not money that's just dumped on the general fund. We don't we don't have any real type, uh, any uh, knowledge of where it ends up, and uh, we'll get it back every year, providing we don't spend it in that particular fiscal year. So, say for example, this fiscal year, we're awarded the grant. This is just this is how this would work. Um, we would take all the money that we have presently in the DPW budget earmarked for trees and put it as part of our match, and then we would take the twelve thousand out of this new account and put that towards the match as well, which would make it so we would have X, Y, and Z funds towards the match part of it. If we don't do that, and if we don't get the grant, and we don't spend any other money, so that money would just get rolled over to next fiscal year. Um, instead of being our normal $40,000 a year, it'd be 52000 Or if we collect any other mitigation money between now and the end of the fiscal year. The twelve thousand is still over, but the the forty thousand stays there. It just gets. Get, I just right. get the. We. Right. I'm actually going to try to see if I can actually ask to increase that fund. Mm -hmm. So we're in the DPW is in the process of actually reviewing um, our budgets based upon what our expenditures were last year and where our shortfalls were and where our surpluses were. So we're trying to possibly reallocate um, some of those funds to make it so we don't have any shortfalls. But there's really, we, we don't really know at, the, at this moment if the city budget is, well, we think it's going to be level, they call level services, which means there's really no, uh, there's no layoffs, uh, and we continue the same services that we had in the previous fiscal year, so basically all the fixed costs will rise. There'll be no new positions, in the, I don't think, and any other new monies available. So we would basically have the same money we had last year, but you can always, I can always make a pitch to try to ask for more money. Um, well, I mean, we've talked about the interest in putting together a request for a bond for a large planting project. I realize that on top of that, you have lots of other costs associated with maintaining a tree program. So I, I, I just don't want you to ask for an increase of ten thousand dollars, and then that be sort of seen as no. I would actually ask it in the sense, for example, we spent about ten or twelve thousand dollars on uh, um, Elm Tree, um, mm -hmm. our Elm Tree program that we have yeah. for uh, injecting the fungicide. Mm -hmm. So I would probably use something a vehicle like that and say, here's 
you know, we have this program that we want to continually fund, and we also have other normal general operations uh, things in the DPW that we use that $40,000 okay. for. Okay. So that's more so than just saying I want $10,000 for the sake of wanting $10,000. Right. So yeah, I mean, I don't know when you sit down and have that conversation with the mayor, with the mayor, whether or not you can just get him used to the idea that we want to bring together, bring forward a large request to him. I don't, I don't think this is news to him, but no. but it would be great for him to just be reminded of. No, it would be so that would be something that would go through capital improvements. So if we are to bond, so if we're so if we decide that we want to plant um, ten, let's say for example ten thousand trees, just out of a figure, we would have to figure out how much the trees are going to cost, and then we're going from the capital improvements, and then it would be ranked by the capital improvements committee, and wherever the ranking fell in that particular year is where it would sit. So if we were in tier one. It would be um, in the top tier to be selected for that fiscal year. If it's in tier two, it goes to the following fiscal year, and then it gets revisited again, provided the department makes the same request again every year. Because any items over $10,000, uh, unless they're an emergency procurement, is considered capital okay. capital request for a singular item. And well, trees in a group would be a singular item. And who's on the capital improvement committee? Do you know? Oh, this is a council uh, committee. It's a count. It's a committee that's that was appointed by the mayor. I don't know because it's all changed. Everything changed last year. Okay. Like the DPW director used to be on there, the uh, central services. So the uh, central director of central services and a few other department heads, city council, city councilors, and the mayor. So this is different than a bond request. This is just a request to the well. You know, it, 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 it is. It is. It is. It, so in order to get a bond, we have to go through that whole process. Mm -hmm. You just can't go and get a bond. Oh, I see. And Amherst runs. Amherst works differently because they have uh, a town meeting, mm -hmm. and they have a, 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 a town form of government versus a local form of government we have. So they have different processes. So at a town meeting, if it comes in front of a warrant that they say we want to make a have a bond for a million dollars for planting trees, the town. The townspeople will vote to approve that mm -hmm. at the town meeting, and then it will go on to a general, um, I don't know if it goes on a general ballot question. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. It depends on the form of government. But here we have to go through capital improvements committee. It has to be recommended from the mayor's office to capital improvements. Capital improvements approves it, mm -hmm. and once it's approved, then the funding mechanism is either by stabilization funds um, or bond money depending upon what the items are and how much they cost. And, and for a bond to be approved, it has, does then go back through the ele uh, election? Some sort of? No. 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 I see. No. I no. See. It, it, it just gets not. added into the budget in that fashion. It gets added or into the, the interest. Correct. It gets added into the budget, and then every year there's a payment, just like we pay mortgage on a house. Right. Okay. I think Todd, you'll correct me if I'm mistaken, but I think that's kind of how it works. Uh, one more question regarding uh, revenue and that is does the city ever collect insurance money from vehicular accidents that in you know that hit trees yes. so you yeah, we either collect the monies or we end up actually having the insurance company plant uh, trees okay. the, tree the only problem is, is they they don't they don't do per caliper inch they do they the insurance company does tree for tree so if somebody mm -hmm. smashes into a 20 inch tree and they break it off we end up with a two and a half inch tree mm -hmm. That's, they don't replace it with a 20 inch tree, and, and they don't give you any other mitigation money for the other caliper inches that are lost. Why not? I, 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 I think I, that's I, a matter of negotiation I because I had our, um, you know, I own a property on Elm Street, and I had a, a, a vehicle drive on my, on my lawn, hit the tree, and then spew a bunch of gasoline on my lawn. And I went, went after the insurance company, and they ended up giving me a really hefty settlement. Well, the way that we do it here is that I call Bartlett Consolidated and they actually deal with everything. I don't, we don't get involved in that. Mm -hmm. So they actually, Bartlett Consolidated actually works with the um, defendant's insurance company to make the claim. They represent us, but we don't pay them. They make their money by actually charging the defendant's insurance company. And that's how they make their money. So I just feel like we need to look into that because I mean, okay. hitting hitting a forty inch tree and replacing it with a two and a half inch is yeah, just it doesn't make a lot of sense. But that's how it's been done for all these years. Mm -hmm. It's definitely worth looking into. All right. Anything else on your list, Rich? No, I'm all set. Okay.
We are, we are hoping to have Felix Lufkin by, and I did confirm that he is coming um, today at 4.30, help yourself. Um, since we have two, 10 minutes before he comes, do we just want to think about what, what, why we're bringing him here today and what sort of conversation we want to have? Yeah, I, th I, I think that there are plantings that are potentially in the way of where we, we didn't have any shade trees already there, and, and in the future there could be more so tree, uh, more places where they plant bushes or whatever, uh, blueberries. I think it's commendable what they're doing, but it needs to be coordinated with, uh, with uh, I think, we're the bridge tree wardens so that they don't take up spaces that could be used for shade trees. Um, if a shade tree is really uh, something we'd much rather see there, or Rich would much rather see there. Okay. I think it's really the case, I mean, down by the courthouse. Uh, I think it's kind of unsightly myself. <laughs> yeah, but, but, I, but, I, but, I, but I would I would leave that, you know, in, in talking to Felix out of it, I think what they're, they're really good intention, some of the things they do might evolve to be something good, but where it actually conflicts with putting shade trees, that I think is where we really need to. What's uh, unsightly, Jay? Is it the number or the height? Well, there's, there's like the courthouse, there's oh. one every six mm -hmm. feet. How much fruit can you produce from a blueberry plant? Yeah. One every, you know, no. blueberries. Well, whatever. Oh, they're not? Whatever it is. Okay. But, yeah, I mean, but, but I think that aside, whether they're unsightly or whether it's not a very good way of producing food, if it prevents a shade tree from being planted. I understand your, what yeah, you're saying. Yeah, that I see as being really in our interest to, to resolve. Hey, Felix, come on in. Anyway. Welcome to the Public Safety Commission. Felix, um, we all have name, name signs here, but if you, you recognize anybody, Rob, obviously. Um, this is our tree warden, Rich Parcelity. How are you doing? Terry works alongside Rich at nice to meet you. Um, Marilyn is a conservation biologist. Todd runs the Hampshire Council of Governments. Okay. Oh, you guys know each other, mm -hmm. right? From the plantings there. Jay is an arborist, but um, also works at Smith College for grounds. Jen is a horticulturalist mm -hmm. professor at STIP. Botanic Garden. Botanic Garden. Oh, really? Oh, really? <laughs> okay. You know Rob and Mara is a, a, um, a Mount Holyoke student. So, thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. Um, we are actually just um, talking now about, before you came, about you know, what we wanted to discuss with you. And um, really you came onto our radar because when we were um, doing a uh, tour this fall for potential planting sites, we had identified that area down <coughs> right as um, Hampton Terrace, is that what it's called? Curves onto Con Street, I don't know, they, you know what I'm talking about, that area right there. Um, as um, a pedestrian walkway that could use a lot of shade and we, we were going to go ahead with that, and then we realized, wait a minute, there are already some plantings there, and brought, brought our attention to the work you were doing. So, um, so we 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 put a, a, um, a temporary hold on that, and then also, and then tried to sort of um, layer back who's, uh, for lack of another word, turf that was under, you know, because tree uh, rich is just as of about 16 or 18 months our tree warden. And your project started before Rich became tree warden, but now he sort of um, is the person to go through for all future plantings on areas that could receive public shade trees. Um, so we just wanted to make sure that we had, we invited you to come and meet us, and then just had, had a little bit of um, um, a collaborative spirit and an understanding that um, for future plantings that we all do, it, it's helpful to coordinate. Sounds great. Do you want to tell us a little bit about Help Yourself? And sure. Um, help Yourself. Uh, nonprofit citizens group that started in fall of 2012 and was back then a 
just pursuing an idea of putting in some grapevines on the rail trail just right here. Uh, and since then it kind of blossomed further and wider than previously imagined. Uh, so for the most part, uh, we have been planting public access perennials, mostly fruit trees, some nut trees, um, in public places, mostly at public schools in about 15 different towns. Mm -hmm. Then other, secondarily, other civic institutions or businesses or restaurants or uh, other nonprofit organizations that have space and land to offer. So we, we seek um, underused lawns and fundraise, donate, and plant um, trees to those spaces. Uh, this, the, to the extent that we've planted on city-owned land, um, mostly has been in here in Northampton, though we have planted at some parks up in Greenfield. Here in town, we have put in some dozens of trees along the rail trail here from, and, and many hundreds of grapevines, from uh, getting up to Union Station all the way down to Veterans Field. Um, the zone right here in particular is sort of the epicenter of that project, that's where it started. And um, in June of 2014, um, we checked in again with David Pomerantz, who is the director of the Department of Central Services, I think. That's still true? Right. Yes. Yeah. Um, and that was our second meeting. The first, I think, was in the fall of 2013. And he said, yeah, like, we think this would be great. In fact, there are many um, DCS curated mown lawn areas all over town. I think mostly around downtown, mostly near parking sites or for example, this parking lot here. Um, so at that time, he said that was the turf of them, though also there was some Venn diagrams because uh, there's the rail trail, and that is all manner of ownership is claimed for that, and then um, there's even the private property of the Maplewood shop. So he generally approved a plan of, of a fruiting and flowering hedgerow along the sidewalk there and some um, larger but not monstrously large fruit trees for that stuff. It is, as I agree, it's super hot and blasted um, heat island in the, in the summer. And so our idea was, hey, what if we had a small orchard there that was diverse, had a number of berries and fruits that people could freely harvest from over a sort of wide window of, of a growing season? Wouldn't that be a cool thing to have next to a hip and um, lively downtown. That was our plan. Of course, um, shade trees are more massive, they sequester more carbon, and they are more like normal in cities. And so I see <laughs> that there is a, a momentum for it. I think it's awesome that there's even such a commission as this that's putting many bazillions of trees all over town. It would be great if we could find some ways to overlap that with the production of food, avoiding, of course, the, the um, unpleasant, frightening scenarios of there being excess food on the ground that would be gross to look at. Um, so I don't know, yeah, I, I would love to go ahead with collaborating, and if that means the trees go in there and those trees come out, you know, that's just one of many, many spots. I'm not super attached to, I'm not gonna like, say over my dead body that those trees move. But I do think it would be really great that there would be a um, orchard close to downtown. Mm -hmm. That's not the case at present. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, thank you. I mean, I, I admire the work that you do. I love that you do it on a shoestring. I love that you do it with volunteers. Um, and I do, I'm a forager, so I love foraging food. Um, and uh, and so I'm not uh, I'm not in the least bit averse to your concept. Mm -hmm. That particular area, yeah. I mean, and maybe this is my particular bias because I live in the neighborhood just beyond that, and I walk that 
you know, many, many times uh, a week in the summertime and it's blazing hot, it's unrelenting. Mm -hmm. So I do think there is a heat island effect down there. Um, there just happens to be a confluence of a lot of hardscapes that all come together there um, that need to be mitigated. So I would love, um, I, and I appreciate you offering that we explore that spot for some shade trees because I think, I think it could use it. Um, and I also think that we can be thinking about what are some spots that could accept fruit and nut trees. And, you know, in, uh, public right of way is mostly our domain. Um, but, you know, that doesn't mean if we can't, if we don't think of something that goes beyond that, we can't, you know, alert you to it. Um, but, yeah, but mostly we work with tree belt and then we're helping residents do setback plans. And one of the things we could potentially ask, we, ha we don't currently, is, um, you know, would you consider a fruit or a nut tree in a setback plan? Maybe there are some people out there who would. And, you know, that would be kind of a win-win. Um, so, um, there was a tree list, there is a tree list, it's no longer current from the formal tree com committee. And this is a tree commission, so it's a, there's a dis disconnect, okay? And, and the old list, I was kind of confined to when we were talking, we, we tried to collaborate, exactly as I was speaking of. But that list was pretty much what I was able to choose from. Things are changing now. We have a whole bunch of people who are thinking about changes. And so actually, this is, would be a good time to try and um, find a way of, of inserting a, a list of trees that would be especially good for fruit and nuts that we could agree on. I think that, that the oldest was extremely careful not to litter with any nuts or fruits. And I think the new. The, I'm speaking ahead of where we are. But yeah, we haven't had the conversation. Right, yet. but we're moving towards looking. I see people looking at trees that are a little bit messier and a little bit greater variety than the trees on the oldest. Yeah, so and certainly with setbacks, it's people's own private property. So exactly, we, there was no such a thing as setback. I don't think right. uh, program in our mm -hmm. county. Right. And so now there's a setback program where people can put a tree up to 20 feet back from the right away. Mm -hmm. And that tree really, you know, if it's within the interests of this, Northampton could be all kinds of fruit trees or nut trees, um, probably. I mean, again, we're speaking ahead, but we're, we're just about to get into this, so this would be a really good time for you to uh, help us with thinking about the kind of trees you'd like to see planted, if we knew that. Especially trees that are both shade trees and produce fruit and nuts. That would be especially the one there are, I think, right? Absolutely. Yeah. We also have a lot of spaces under power lines that, mm -hmm. you know, instead of just giving up, I think it's, uh, you know, a great place for edible landscape plantings. Yeah. Whether they're, you know, trees can be accommodated or if it's, you know, other edible landscape shrubbery. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Sounds like there's two threads. One is the fate of <laughs> Area 51 right there, and the other is how <laughs> is <that what> is? <laughs> how can um, how can perhaps uh, random areas around town that wouldn't be suited to shade trees find trees that would be perhaps semi dwarf or smaller uh, that would have other yields such as food or nuts or medicine, and how can also citizens um, who are seeking trees of some type get clued into the possibility of um, the trees that are being provided from somewhere mm -hmm. and possibly other um, species that have fruit. Let me just tell you where we are right now in sort of the zoomed out picture. So we hope to undertake in 2016 our first ever um, comprehensive tree inventory, so our street tree inventory. So we're going to find out what's out there and in what condition, what age, what species, di diversity. Um, and th and then that's going to be transferable to a uh, GIS format. 
um, that could potentially have some, you know, that would definitely have access from the public, but we don't know to what level of interaction. But, you know, folks could go, I, I, I don't know, but I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if people could go, go on and go search for all apple trees, and they could find out what all the, you know, public apple trees are in town. I mean, that's something that might be possible. And that would be cool. Another thing that would probably be possible is work with the GIS people at Smith and have the students come up with a, a GIS map that people could access. There is an existing platform called yeah. fallenfruit.org. Are you familiar with that? I'm, I'm familiar with others. I don't know Fallen Fruit. Think, uh, and there are more than one. Yeah. So the thing you want to think about is Fallen Fruit, and it has some layer overlaid onto it looks like Google Maps, mm -hmm. and it seems highly accurate and highly like, um, you know, so that you wouldn't have to reinvent the whole map. Okay. So, um, and then users, which can be defined by groups or general people, can submit little pins saying, like, "Hey, there's a honey locust here." And Amherst has loaded up Amherst with its own inventory of this, but Northampton only has a few trees mapped on the site. But what's but even if this is just a model that is like yeah. emulated, uh, the pins have information like who planted it when, species, link to Wikipedia, other points of information. So I think that'd be a great resource. Mm -hmm. Okay. Absolutely. I'll take a look at it. Uh, Rich, aren't you in the pro pro aren't we already in the process of making a map of every tree that we uh, plant and what this what it is. So yeah, I mean, we are on the, we have everything we have right now for trees we planted this year is still on the Google right. map book. Yeah. Are, and I'm there's gonna, a link to that on the website. Gonna be created, we're gonna create a layer actually to uh, layer right into our GIS maps that we have for the public works department, which hopefully then we will also create another layer of a GIS map for the tree inventory once that is completed. So that'll be all in that repository so people can people can look at it, they just can't edit it. Mm -hmm. Right, can't edit it, but you could, you could when we plant apple trees, note that they're fruiting apple trees. Yeah, I wonder if, if there's, there's a way that of doing a search. I talked with Andrew years ago about putting together a map like that and have it where the, the, the street trees, the city trees would be, um, they couldn't touch that, but there would be a, another layer of private property trees that people could add yeah. things to. Uh -huh. And he was pretty amenable to making that happen. At that point, we didn't really have a good system yet for doing it. Mm -hmm. Once we get the inventory, mm -hmm. does anyone else have any comments or questions? I have just a just a couple of maintenance questions. So, Felix, this past year, when we were maintaining the rail trail from the uh, New South Street Bridge to the Veterans Field access road, unfortunately, yeah. some of the plantings you had there got damaged because we ended up, we couldn't see them. They were so overgrown that we didn't know that they were even in there. Yeah. Or the stakes that they had next to them had fallen down, so we ended up unfortunately mowing them over. What, what have you, or how does your organization deal with uh, regular routine maintenance of these plantings? So when there is an area where there's a conflict like, like that, that the conflict can be avoided, so we don't damage your plant material. Um, are you referring to fall maintenance? No, we end, we end up mowing, we mow the, we mow the bike path usually, and mm -hmm. most of it, almost every other week probably, or as needed. So if the plants, so because of the nature of the fact that we don't, then everything grows That's in. Not, absolutely. So my, my only concern was is that some of the plants you planted were like little bare rips, that, the whips that we gave mm -hmm. away, and so without them being properly staked, um, they were just bare, they were just in the tall grass and they got mowed over. Um, and checking in, on, checking in on them this fall, most of them are hopefully in it to win it and have sprouted back a little bit. But that is like a horrid stretch to maintain for anyone, no matter what their equipment. And um, <laughs> last summer, I went through a number of gas mowers, and, and those broke. Um, just getting through the stuff, and I, I since like pulled out all the many of the chunks of asphalt and things like that. So we switched to sides, and the sides are great. Um, but sometimes it's hard to keep up with the seemingly like weekly need to cut down a whole jungle of not weed and this and that. So uh, 
I can only say that we will hope to continue to recruit and inspire volunteers to take on smaller and more manageable sections for that, but also in sections that need just really frequent maintenance, um, maybe invest in things that can get mowed or will hold their own for so, such a long period of time that they'll like emerge out of it. But this fall we got a good hookup with some tree companies in town that have been dumping wood chips under the bridge there and having mulched around um, from, from that bridge maybe two to three hundred feet towards Red's Field are they're just apple trees and those are a little bit more of an investment than the little rose whips and things like that. So I have begun focusing mulching around those and those have seemingly held their own against this stuff. So the switch in, in focus to initially protect the plantings by setting them up with thick, thick, thick layers of cardboard and mulch on top of that. And I think the stakes are important, tall stakes with the flagging. It's hard. Things like up here where it's clearly just uh, short grass, it has been mowed for years and there's no other deep rooted herbs that will come up. That feels to me way easier to be mowed clearly around. So if there was a pattern language of, of what is a planting and what is adjusted for mowing, that would be great. So far that's been wood chips out to like maybe this far in a stake. Sometimes with the smaller things like if they're um, oregano or a little lavender bush or this or that, um, those are hard to see moving along on a riding mower and Many of those things have been cut, but then again, um, some of them didn't make it anyway, and, and I feel most invested in, make, in protecting the, the woody things. Um, so yeah, I think communication between maintenance and planting is best, even before any planting happens, so I'm sure those needs are taken care of. And that's my hope that nothing has been made harder for anyone to maintain. No, I mean, I don't think it's been made harder, it's just that after four or five plants get mowed over, you know, the operator has to stop and realize the fact that he's just destroyed a bunch of stuff and I usually get a call and I just, I think it would be, I think it would be good going forward to a couple of things to be in contact with each other about your planting plans for this upcoming year. Mm -hmm. you know, it would also be helpful for us to have some kind of a schematic. Mm -hmm. uh, Hand-drawn is fine, just something so I can have to know that this is what's planted, this is what's existing, and, and going forward, this is what we'd like to do in this location. And that way that we can just kind of all be on the same page so we try to avoid um, any mistaken overlaps of any kind. Okay, sounds great. Okay. As, as of this spring, we don't have plans to extend for this year the plantings on the rail trail, but we'll probably focus um, at schools in the area and other places like that. But if there's any um, if any search turns up any town owned lands that could use a shade tree but didn't get a shade tree because of some reason, let me know because I do have many, many plants waiting to be planted. And that said, actually, if there, um, I remember a few years ago, Rob, you and I spoke about plants, about the possibility of a town nursery for generating down the line shade trees or other trees. Um, sounds like an amazing idea. I have seeds and baby plants that I could contribute to that, both of shade trees and of fruit trees. And right now we have little creatures growing at humans, so we have nursery space there. Um, and I'm curious actually where most of these plants have been sourced from that you guys have been putting in. <laughs> Not ideally. <laughs> well, so some of them come from Bigelow, which is a big supplier, and Northeast Nursery is a big supplier. But I think that our, our, we've currently turned our attention to Amherst Nursery, uh -huh. which you must be familiar yeah. with. And, uh, and we're trying, we haven't tried it yet, but we're going to try some bare root, uh, better lards. Uh, so we're talking about inch and three quarter diameter to two inch diameter bare root trees. Okay. And they're sourced from a, a nursery in upstate New York called Schichtel's. So you have to have a special digging system to be able to get them out. You know, it's a different, whole different production method. Right, they're digging out big trees, but yeah. but anyway. So I, th I think we're, we're we've narrowed it down to where we'll probably be getting trees from the Amherst Nursery residuals. Felix, do you have a Most sense of how many trees you've planted so far in the city? In Northampton? Yeah. Um, maybe like. 
like 50 something mm -hmm. and then more than that for bushes and, mm -hmm. and then I think the tally for grape vines on um, the rail trail is like pushing 200 mm -hmm. and now those are in four years ago now they each spring when they're pruned those yield more cuttings that can get rooted to sort of freely generate more are a lot of the Concord grapes? Or they are four-fifths of them are Concord. Others are stupid. I've got a bit of a concern with that. It's grapes are kind of an invasive species in our woodlands. They're, you know, the birds take them out and go in just about any woodlot, you're going to see grapevines strangling trees. Including the Concord grape, too. Well, I think maybe going forward, picking seedless grape varieties might be a better way to go if we're going to be planting them in the city. Um, could you see this? I thought that Concord was a native species and most of the, or a native cultivar of, a, cult, a local cultivar of native wild grapes, which I think came from Concord Mass in the mid-1800s. Most of what we've been planting have been native species because they're cheap to source, because they come true from seed, and because they're very vigorous and produce like fairly decent fruit without the pests that like the fancier peaches are, are mm -hmm. okay. um, But for recognition, we found that some of the more common fruits like apples, pears, Asian pears, even peaches and plums, common grapes are very eye-catching and inspiring. I will think about that, yeah. I've seen huge mega, almost like ice age grapevines climbing up trees, but I have never thought of them as um, uh, invasive in that. Well, like they compete for the same sunlight, I guess, maybe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and they compete with bittersweet. Um, okay, so um, we've got to wrap this up, unfortunately, but thank you for coming. And I, I just want to say that whatever we just uh, however we decide to move forward with the space down there will we'll obviously give you plenty of notice mm -hmm. and, and bring you in the loop and, and if it's a matter of you wanting to move some things first, we'll certainly, we'll certainly have you in the conversation. Okay. Um, can I make a few proposal ideas for that stuff? Yes, really in two quick. minutes. Okay. One is, uh, currently right now there are seven semi-dwarf fruit trees. Peaches, apples, Asian pears, and mountain ash. These will get to be 12 to 15 feet tall and spread about that far, but not onto the sidewalk. There are some two dozen shrubs that will range from six to eight feet, rose, currant, um, the bush cherry, aronia, things like that. Those are along the sidewalk. Um, most of those require full sun for fruit. So if shade trees were planted there and then overshaded them, those trees would survive and not have fruit. If we decided that, hey, we need to have shade trees here, um, one idea is that we could pull out those existing trees and put in some equal number of dwarf fruit trees, dwarf dwarf, which would get six to eight feet, have fruit, crank out apples for 30 years, and then kick the bucket mm -hmm. in their pre-designed shorter lifespan as the canopy may close with whatever it is that you think. Um, I don't see why there couldn't be an understory that either didn't live as long as the overstory or can transition into a shader overstory, specifically an understory that produced food and medicine or habitat or some other fun thing for people to interact with besides just tall thing and grass. Um, so maybe we can find some overlap, literally overlap, of layers of the design forest that we're imagining that would suit all the needs that we perceive or are aiming for. Um, we can talk about that more. Okay, it's an interesting thought. I, I would hate to wait 30 years to have really full shade there. Well, well, whatever. So I wouldn't, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't, I, I, I hear what you're saying, that, you know, trying to strike um, a, can we meet all of our needs? But I can't imagine that we'd be choosing trees that will take that long to reach, you know, to, to provide shade for people. And, and so far earlier than 30 years, they'd probably be already shading out. Well, like 10 years? Maybe, yeah. Okay. So in yeah. 10 years, a dwarf apple will have like seven years of okay. production and, and after that, boom, chop it down. Or maybe it could be translated or, or it could be a source for cyan wood for other trees to be grafted and create seeds. It could have yields beyond um, 
yeah, it wouldn't it wouldn't preclude the shade at all. It would just okay. stop having as much fruit. Okay. That's just one idea. All right. Thank you. Thanks um, again for coming. Absolutely. And, you know, sorry, this one spot seemed to be like a place where we both had to, that had our wishes. That's okay. Um, but, you know, That's I'm sure there are many, many other spots where we can work in collaboration and actually forward your, the mission of your organization. Sounds great. Um, to whom may I submit a suggested list of species for private people to have in their setbacks and maybe shade slash yeah. non messy? Um, Why don't you send it to Rich? Okay. Um, and we're, we are going to have a discussion about uh, um, pla our planting list, so okay. that would be, he could just add that to the mix. <coughs> okay. All right? Sounds good. All right, thanks again for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Mm -hmm. All right, um, survey analysis. All right. Other business? Yes. I'll just I'll remember. Yeah, thanks. Just a few comments about what you Okay. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Um, well, Jay, at the last meeting I prepared a preliminary report of the public shade survey. Okay. Um, that we sent out uh, in the fall because I've been going through the data and analyzing it. And uh, nice to see you, Mira. Thanks. <laughs> Mira's been helpful, so thanks for your input. <laughs> um, well, this is the part that I'd like to share with you, a bit of the analysis. Um, as I mentioned last time, the questions of most particular importance and usefulness to, for our purposes were questions five, six, eight, and nine, which um, were open questions, and they uh, were intended to elicit responses regarding 20-year vision, suggested locations for tree plantings, um, comments to Rich, and then interest in volunteer help. Um, and these four questions alone generated 1,164 responses. So I was going through them. I just feel like I keep sort of reaching in and dredging more and more. So mm -hmm. this is what I've got. And um, sorry I didn't send this around, but uh, I can do that actually after I read it. I was working on it right up until the meeting. Um, the most common and compelling vision for Northampton's tree canopy in 20 years essentially includes, and this is what I bolded, more trees and more shade on more streets. This includes a greater diversity, both age and species, of trees lining the streets of Paradise City, as um, somebody commented on. Uh, what is our version, what does Paradise City look like to mm -hmm. us, more trees. Um, citizens express desire for a resplendent tree canopy that is more extensive, widespread, lush, robust, strong, multi-tiered, dense, full, verdant, and vibrant than currently exists, 2015. These are some of the words that were used. This dream of a greener city consists of an abundance of trees that are hardy, disease resistant, tall, stately, majestic, sturdy, grand, and thriving. Such tree cover would be found throughout town in every ward, particularly at entryways of the city and public places and around businesses, especially on King Street. Reasons were both aesthetic and environmental. There was also a state of preference for non-invasive trees, fruit trees, and even labeling of trees as an educational opportunity. In order to prioritize and maximize a shade tree canopy, many people stated the need for both knowledgeable planning as well as sustained caring. Community involvement and long-term leadership are felt to be essential to strategically steward and manage Northampton's trees. Partnerships between residents, businesses, local government, and community groups is required, in addition to expertise and oversight in the form of standards slash ordinances slash policy slash regulations. In other words, a thoughtful and careful system of restoration is necessary. An integrated approach between residential and business owners, which utilizes private and public resources, was repeatedly expressed. Approximately 20%, 77 respondents, mentioned fiscal concerns or suggestions. Concerns were primarily regarding funding sources and tax increases. Suggestions ranged from a Community Preservation Act type of fund, 
grants, the use of parking fees, residents donating tree, free trees uh, from the Arbor Day Foundation, a foster tree campaign, a tree fund as a line item in the city budget, and a Kickstarter campaign. While some were adamant about not wanting increased taxes, one person stated in all caps, I would give money to see this done. Others noted Smith College, Smith Folk, UMass, and the Student Conservation Association as existing and potential community resources. Many, uh, 55 in particular, offered to assist through volunteering. The majority, 91% of those taking the survey responded to the opening questions with only 9% saying that they don't know uh, or didn't have any response to offer. What emerged is a readiness to start planting and a sense of community pride in the establishment and maintenance of a tree-rich city in which we are famous for our tree-lined streets. While only eight respondents specifically mentioned climate change, many did express wiring issues regarding the relationship between trees and utility lines. There were 78 streets in particular uh, that were mentioned where citizens would like to see more treats, and I included this in alphabetical order. But most notable is King Street. Uh, I don't have the percentage, but King Street. Also uh, Pleasant Street, Main Street, Elm Street. Um, the, these were repeatedly uh, mentioned. Um, it was also stated that uh, tree planting should be prioritized in areas that have a lot of impervious service surface uh, in low-income neighborhoods. Pulaski Park was mentioned a lot uh, in munis municipal areas, including schools, sport fields, playgrounds, city hall, hospitals, um, in the main thoroughfares, and in downtown Florence. So some of these things uh, we're, we already were aware of, but it was very reinforcing and affirmative to um, just sort of go through the spreadsheet and just see over and over again some of these um, repeated phrases and suggestions and notations. Um, that's what I have so far. <laughs> I think it's really summary. helpful to have mm -hmm. a, a, you know, a, a summary like that. And I thank you for, for trying to make sense of all of that mm -hmm. data. Um, one thing I would say about yes. the, the bold that I would give money to see this done, we actually have hard data to reinforce that in the form of that question where yes. people could indicate that they would contribute to a tree fund. Mm -hmm. So that, that bumps that number up to a really tangible number, like 40% of the respondents. I think it was a huge number said that they would contribute to a tree fund. Um, yeah, honestly, um, this is my analysis of two uh, of the open questions. Open questions. Third open, yeah, yeah. so um, right. I still have to go through the one specifically uh, addressed to you, Rich, um, and some of the volunteer stuff, so. Are you able to, I mean, I don't want to, put you through too much work here because I know you've it's, done a lot. But it's actually quite interesting. Are you like, able to find out the frequency that people identified given streets? Like you said, King Street, I do remember King Street standing out way, 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 but I'd like to know what was the second most identified street, mm -hmm. you know. That would be really helpful, just to get that in really hard data. And not that none of this we have to be beholden to, mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's helpful to know what strikes people out there. The, the average Joe on the street as really lacking. What streets are really lacking? Yeah, that's definitely doable. I mean, it will take some um, copying and pasting and just then doing a sort. I think that mm -hmm. might be the best way to do it. Um, or just, yeah, search and mm -hmm. no, no search and count. <laughs> okay, yeah, all right. Yeah. I don't know if search function tells you it's come up 30 times or something, the name King Street. Other people's thoughts yeah, about this? Mm. All you folks looking down at your <laughs> your devices. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I just made like I was looking over a few of the um, the survey um, that taxes and the lack of increase in taxes is definitely um, one of the main concern for people um, is that their taxes will increase if, if this program you know, increases substantially. Um, is there some way that um, they, people could be assured that their taxes wouldn't increase much or at all. Um, no, I think. <laughs> no, there isn't. Um, uh -oh. um, and uh -oh. here, here, here's really my um, my response to that, or my um, reaction to that is that undoubtedly, 
completing a survey already, you're a self-selected population. Mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're on one or at the other end of the poll. If you have kind of no opinion about trees, you're not likely to do a survey. Mm -hmm. So this survey captures polarized opinions. Mm -hmm. And so that's why you have some people that go on there just to reemphasize what they emphasize when they go to every city council meeting or you know anytime they can, which is no new taxes, we hate taxes. Mm -hmm. So I take that with a grain of salt. I mean, it does represent a portion of people, but um, if you look at the vast majority of responses there, if you really compare those that those numbers of responses to the vast majority of people who were enthusiastic about the tree program, I think that. It really keeps it, holds it in perspective. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing is, I yeah, I would never want to make any promises to people. It's certainly, the, the mayor isn't going to ask for an override just to plant trees. So mm -hmm. I don't think that we need to worry about that. And I don't need, think we need to conflate the two. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't think that we should not advocate for more money going to this program because some people on a survey have said no new taxes. Mm -hmm. I think at the last meeting, Rick brought some numbers that included the amount of money spent per capita on trees, and it was like $10.80 or something. So if you double the amount spent on trees, it would be $10.80. So it's it's not a huge budgetary issue in a way, mm -hmm. in some ways. I mean, they, they no, I imagine so. I, I, oh, don't I didn't imagine so. I, mean, I didn't know. No, I, I don't feel that trees are generally a huge yeah. portion of the budget. I think they should be more. but. Um, but I think that the fear is probably conflated as that the people imagine that there are, is a greater expense than there actually is. Right, that's why so. I think that figure is important to $10. Well, I think that's uh, sort of what my point was, not to say that you know we won't increase taxes at all, but to assure people that the tax um, that is, or how much they're paying actually for trees is minuscule compared to, right. you know, so other well, forms of Well, and that so. we leverage every dollar really well. Well, exactly, and that there's a huge return on the money, yeah. the minimal right. amount of money that they're spending. Right. right. So, yeah, on the door hanger that we're designing, you know, one side of it is about the tree to be planted, you know, to be watered, and asking people to help water the trees. The other is on the larger, like this is the this is the ambitious program we're undertaking, and oh by the way, these are all the benefits of trees. Mm -hmm. So it's an That's educational awesome. tool too. Because you know the data is out there that every tree you plant, you save like five five dollars. Sure. Yeah. Per Every, every dollar you invest. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I, I think this is great because I think um, I think it would be really nice to, to provide a summary in some fashion, mm -hmm. uh, either on our website or present to the mayor's office or when we justify that we feel really strongly about this program because 400 residents, you know, who responded said, this is, this is the take-home message. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, it's great. Any other thoughts? Comments? Thanks for this. That would be really helpful. Job. Yeah. Making yeah. cases as we go forward. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah. Okay. All right. What else we got here? Okay, we are going to continue our discussion of um, 2016 priorities. Um, and did everyone see the uh, Google sheet that Jen shared? No? Oh, I didn't realize it came from Jen, but yes. It came from me, but it was yeah. originally me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I got it. create new public shade tree commission tree list. 
Develop and foster a public engagement plan, including outreach for planting, planting requests and water. Review mission of the public shade. Plant remaining stock and evaluate bare roots planting. Revisit establishment of a nursery. Prepare to recommend a tree bond to the mayor. Feels pretty comprehensive to me. <laughs> I have a quick question about the tree list. Is, do we have somebody who's doing that currently? I thought about it. Ron? Um, you know, I, I think that we're ordering trees, seeing what's available. And, yeah, of and, course. And so we're learning some, and we have the old list, and then there, I've actually compiled a whole bunch of lists from uh, both tree companies and other towns and whatnot. And I've sent some of that on to, to Rich. It's a pot, I mean, you know, and so we have a lot of by information, but we haven't gone so far as to make it. And does the list yes. have to include every single cultivar we would be considering? I mean, is that the idea, Jay? Here's part of the reason why I ask is, is um, you know, in um, some of the city ordinances that pertain to trees, like around um, zoning stuff, they have they have a tree list, you know, that is very general. If it's not. It doesn't have a lot of specific cultivars. I think that's where you run into, and we ran into last year. We ordered. Uh, we got. We ended up with upright trees, and we didn't want upright trees uh -huh. because we just said uh, we'll take this. We'll take this oh, I see. So it's really important to be very specific. That's what they had, and that's what okay. they gave us. Oh, okay. Right, but it's hard to nail down every cultivar because there are always new ones and a long list. So I mean, he, yeah, he, you might want to include like. If, if we have a species we like, yeah, we don't want upright form or something yeah. like that. Because right. okay. okay. there is, I'll, I'll get this list to you, but there's a newer list being generated for um, being able to uh, uh, survive, um, salt perform salt. best salt tolerant in storms. Because we're going to have yeah. higher storm incidents yeah. and there's a whole I just ran across one to, uh, today that was, I'll, I'll, I'll yeah. pull a couple of games. Okay. So, so to so the credit of the old list, there was, in a very brief section, they would just have a key for what the requirements were for planting such a tree in terms of sometimes soil or, or more just space or, or salt tolerance. And so going over the list and deciding where, part of having a tree list is to decide where they, can, where they mm -hmm. could be planted the type of conditions that are really valuable. Okay, getting back to this this bulleted list of priorities. Um, it, are there any priorities here that anyone feels like should not be in our 2016 list? And then we're gonna start with that question and then the next question will be, how do we number this? What is the tree bond for? Well, once we, uh, this may be a 2017 thing, it really depends on the timeline of the tree inventory, but once we have the tree inventory com completed, it will include identifying a thousand planting sites. And so we, we could therefore take, take that, we could make a compelling case for a, um, a, a big amount of money to be dedicated to a, a multi-year project. And so that would, that's, that's what we mean here by tree bond. It's really prepared to um, recommend a, a reforestation project that, you know, a, a costly reforestation. A commitment for yeah. so many years exactly. to so many trees. Yeah. Kind of like what Amherst did? Yeah, okay. exactly. We're calling that tree bond, but it's actually probably not the best. Okay. So a, I don't know, budget, budgetary commitment? Multi-year budgetary yeah. commitment. Mm -hmm. Because that's what we're really after, in case the administration changes. For large, for large scale replanting. That would be a lot. <laughs> that would be a lot. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> and I don't, I don't even think that to the mayor is really necessarily. I'm not sure he's he's the right body. I mean, it's you know, it's to our elected officials. And it sounds like. I don't know if he if we take that to him and then he takes it to the capital improvements. He takes everything. Okay. He All right. So it is to the mayor. That's right. He, 
As a department head, you make your recommendations to the mayor's office. Okay. The mayor's office reviews them and the mayor forwards them. Sometimes the mayor does not forward them, depending on what the mayor's priorities are. But do we as a commission take take it to the mayor or do we actually no, give it to you? You give it to me and then okay. I will take it to the mayor. Okay, so it's really to you, the tree warden. Okay. All right, so that is a, you know, that is a big if. There's, you know, we're already into February and and uh, we might not get started on this project this summer. It really depends on how fast um, right. the DCR. DCR moves. So really the, the way that that would work is that if we have the, uh, the 1,000 um, sites identified, let's say by August, then we would actually be able to um, get for FY 18 mm -hmm. would be, no, let's see, we're in FY 16 right now. So actually FY 17's capital improvements monies would be the bond. So we would actually, no, FY 18. No, no, no. FY 18, right, FY 18. So we would actually go in front of, because capital improvements actually works a little differently. They start their budget cycle the September before and they actually spend a tremendous amount of time reviewing different requests from different departments for capital items. <coughs> so if we had this planting sites located by August, we could actually put something together for a, for a, for a bond using the information that we have on how much the trees actually cost and so on and so forth. And uh, also depending upon the mode of planting, if we were gonna have a contract to do some of it, volunteers, city forces, then we would actually give all that information to the mayor's office. Well, and so the potential yeah. does exist for that to happen, but okay. So, so that that would be a late. That would be a, at the very best late 2016, I, more likely. Uh, I, I would think it would be at the bottom or where it sits at this list. If this, the, if this is how we rank things, that would be probably at the close to the bottom. You mean just because of chronology? Yes. Yes. Okay. So in, in Amherst, a large proportion of trees, I think, were setback planting. So. You, Within that thousand trees, you kind of have to weigh that against setback planning Correct. where they fit into the whole plan. I don't know how they did that. I mean, they bonded money for set unidentified setback planning. And we could do the same thing. Yeah. I mean, we, we could actually ask for 2,000 trees, 1,000 which we know could be on public sites, and 1,000 which we hope to put in setbacks. Yeah. But anyway, I don't want to get too much into the, to the weeds, so to speak. Um, so going back to this, I'd actually like... First, back to my, my first question. Is there anything on here missing or is there anything on here you feel it should be omitted? And then my next question is, we're not ranking this in terms of chronology. We're actually ranking this in terms of what we feel most important that we need to get done this year. I have a suggestion for that process. Okay. Um, something I've done before, uh, just create a simple list and then um, like three columns next to it, first, second, third choice. And then, I mean, sometimes you can do it with like a little sticky dots, but you we don't have them. Just write them right here. And yeah. yeah, and then, and then we each just basically come up and just like put a check or a hash mark next to, this is the one I think is first priority, second, third, and then we just see what the group comes up with. Uh, the priority regardless of schedule or? Well, if we all agree that these are 2016 priorities, then it's the highest priority. So see, we want to spend mm -hmm. our most time achieving the things we most want to get done. And so even though something may chronologically come before another thing, what is the thing we most want to get done in 2016? And that's mm -hmm. what we should be prioritizing in terms of how we spend our time. Mm -hmm. so that's that's how, what I'm distinguishing. Because chronology, because what can happen is you can, you know, something can come before chronology and end up taking up a lot more time and then pushing out that more important thing that you really wanted to get done. So I, I, I really want to just focus on what we most want to achieve in 2016. Does, um, like, what is a lower hanging fruit? You, you know, well, I, I, I'm a little. Yeah, I mean, I no, that's not what I'm asking either. I'm, okay. I, no, this exercise okay. so is I really even about, think about that. We can talk about that later, but this exercise okay. right now is really about identifying what's the most important thing we want to get done in terms Okay. Of. I, and I would suggest there's a question mark in the minutes uh, on the uh, ordinance one. I, I would um, suggest breaking that one into two. The oh, public safety right. protection ordinance and then the more comprehensive design guideline right. process. Okay, so, so make a bullet here. It's okay. Just make a new bullet and have um, design, design guidelines. guidelines. Right. Yeah, those are two different. Mm -hmm. Three. 
Yes, so. You only get two. Oh, what oh, was he killing me? He's killing me now. Top three. Top three. Yeah. And rank them one, two, three, right? Yeah, and then just put like a hash bar. Oh, God. Yep, yep, yep. First, yep. first and then tree the okay. second. Well, this is good. Do you want me to help you with um, engagement plan? Okay, first mission, mission statement. Mission, yep. Uh -huh. Next one is um, planting. The next one is nursery. And the next one I'm going to just say bond because everybody will know. Okay. Group hug. Is there any disagreement? What? Group hug. Can I just ask this for this so we get so we get more nitty gritty? Is there any disagreement that getting tree inventory underway is in the top three? Uh, you mean get, getting the planted or getting get no, tree, tree inventory tree underway? Is oh, anyone disagree that that's not yes. in the top three? Yeah, right. That's not top three. So yeah. that way we can dig a little deeper you're into not the other ones. Right? You're not going to vote, but you can participate in this conversation. Right. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> you can always participate in the conversation. Right, so the two priorities. Mm -hmm. Right. Just take the so I'm saying order. take that one off. We so, all agree. So do I mean, we take that one off the table. Is, is, is the, well, no, I want to know what the number one is. I just want to be really clear. Okay, do we so each want to go off and do our thing? Just straw vote here. Who, who thinks the tree inventories are number one priority for 2016? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that's unanimous. But, all right. but Todd's point is that now that we're down to picking two, uh -huh. Having some discussion rather than just checking the stuff. Well, out. no, not well that, and but I also want now us to choose the next three. So oh, now that we all agree, inventory is number one. Okay. Now okay. Uh, let's so delve we'll a little deeper four. and figure okay. out four. Got it. Right. Okay. I'm well, I got it. And I'm I'm still our time. So you guys want to come here. up? And, just put your and we're in. actually past time. So oh, so right. you know this does not have to be done today. So let's just get this far as identifying what our top four are. I'd like to well, I'd move that we get this. It's spend a little more time on this, and I don't have twenty minutes. It's still okay. All right. Say. So how about if I take ten minutes away from Arbor Day? All right. Uh, that gives us the two five more minutes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Because unfortunately, like you know, I mean, I could take another. I could take five minutes from other business too. So we have ten minutes. So why don't we each come up and just put our little marks in the boxes? Because there's something powerful the about seeing the what yeah, no, that's um, like vol um, citizen volunteer engagement. Uh, plan. Some of these are going to get done no matter what we check. Right. Right. So it's not you know, we're going to plant the remaining trees. Thank you. Well, I think you raise a good point. Um, so, I mean, the tree list is so, that's so simple and easy, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, should we just not bother mentioning that? Right, because yeah, we're going to do it. Yeah, anyway. I think so. We, um, but also, it's time to get things going to get there anyway. The planting and the tree list are going to get done. The planting yeah. will get done, which is third from the bottom. It's easy. Third from the bottom, Lily, and then we're going to uh -huh. get Yeah, we're doing that. So we know we're doing the spring planting. We don't know that no. we're doing a fall planting. No, we're just assuming no. that's referring to the spring. Is that yeah. referring only yeah. to spring? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so maybe figure out the fall planting. Right. No. So that's okay. really not part of the list. All right. Um, easy. Or, 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 no, I wouldn't say it's easy. But <laughs> a good one won't be that easy. Right. We're doing it. Right. We're doing it. So now we're down to a lot fewer. Step right up, Jim. Oh, yeah. This is hard. It's like choosing a basketball This person can really dribble, but this person's got a really good three point shot. I don't know. <laughs> Could I just add something? Uh huh. On the development one? Is education a component yes. of that? Yes. No, education is a component of engagement. Engagement.
shots and then up at four o'clock. Jay, your next one should go under thirty. Oh, that's not what it doesn't really matter. Oh, whoops. Oh, I did that same thing. Um, yeah, don't worry about it. You're going to change it because really it's about oh, the number right. of okay. days. Right, right, right. So I mean, don't worry about it. I'll peak now and, you know, I'll go play um, three hours of volleyball and then stay up until 30. Oh, yeah. No. You just put them on the first column. Right. Right. Oh, on stuff but it would be it would I mean, we'd be the principal author of it yes. and then mm -hmm. submit it to the staff and empowering the people to, yeah. to okay. be protected okay. okay. yep we've got it alright well, no. let's see what we have no. um, ordinances oh, oh, ordinance is clearly right. number two right yep mm -hmm. okay and then comes next in one two three four one two three four four for this one uh, one, two, three, four, five for this one, and three for this one. Okay. So we're looking at inventory, um, ordinance, engage. So this is this is citizen engagement plan. So engagement plan. And then what do we have? Uh, design guidelines. And. Mission. Hmm. Okay. Um, we've got like three or four minutes of discussion here. So inventory, we all agree on. We all agree on ordinance. I think that came as no. Those, those two are really clear priorities. Um, if I could just make a, a comment, you know, if you don't know what your mission is, <laughs> it's really hard to do a good job. 
Um, and I don't think that that needs to be a really hard process, but I think it's an urgent process. I think we need to know why, why we're doing what we're doing and have really clear vision. Um, so I would like to make a, a pitch for that being a priority for 2016 and, and a fairly short-term one. Does anyone have a you know, feeling otherwise? I, um, I thought that was important. Uh, the reason why I voted for the engagement plan is because, um, I mean, really it should be the mission would then drive the engagement plan, but I think if we have an engagement plan, I, I just want to really, from a person who was on the end of organizing something, mm -hmm. I and it could just like float off into mm -hmm. this like giant job that somebody just ends up doing, you know, I really, I just think we need like some skeletal, plan to guide us and look and say, okay, can we do this? Who do we need help from? How do we, you know, so it just doesn't end up being on a couple people and, you know, mm -hmm. can we just, you know, get the hangar done and how are we going to get people out? It, you know, I just, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay. rather than, that's why I, that's why I, yeah, I put appreciate that, that as a high. Well, yeah, having some insight into if what it was. Some in insight into what the engagement plan will be help to, to inform the mission statement so we come up with a mission that I think it's just works. the opposite yeah, yeah. because we have to know whether part of our mission right. is to have an engagement plan. Right. Yeah, you right. know yeah. you know what I mean? It's like we've had this conversation before. Exactly. But it's back and forth. If there's some back and forth because we have all these do we have volunteers? Do we want to engage them? Is but is that our job? Part? You know what I mean? Is it the right. job of the commission? Yeah. Right, yeah. exactly. So I, I'm just saying they work kind of together because yeah. you have to think of what your engagement plan is and then does it fit in the mission and you can back and forth so kind of thinking simultaneously. But I don't think the mission plan, you're, I think you're correct that it won't be that huge of a thing. I, to I think actually once you determine what your priorities are for this year, then you can easily make your mission statement. Because I, really, I really think that's, I mean, I agree with Lee in order to have a mission statement, but you have drivers right there on the board that actually can define what your mission statement is. And your mission statement can always change. Yeah. There's there's the core mission statement, which is basically, you know, we are here to support the public shade trees for the city of Northampton. You know, it's just one big blanket thing with a whole bunch of other bullets underneath it. And then your mission statement for that particular year, which would be the things that you're actually discussing right now. And then you can just, you can adjust that because every year you're not gonna have the same we're not going to have the same tasks every year. I mean, we will have similar tasks, but we will be, once these other things are completed, there will be other tasks that the commission will want to move on to and related to public shade trees. But I think it would be really easy to make mission statements. I would too. And I just say, I just really hate our current mission as described under the charter. It's just, it just doesn't feel complete and it feels off a little to me. So I just want to just sort of drive through that, get a clear mission. And, and then and then we've got a mission statement. I mean, it's just sort of a it's cart generic. and a horse it's, thing. It's generic. It's, it, was just, it was just a generic It had some statement. things in it, though, like yeah. we'll, we'll create an inventory and help plan, or help by, you know, pick, select trees. And it just felt like there were some really strange, very specific things that mm -hmm. I didn't really feel like they, and, and, and if you're gonna put specific things in it, then there were some, a lot of things that were missing, so. Oh, good point. So I, I support that. I that was one of my that was my slash in the first column because um, I feel like um, yeah that that feels like putting first things first. Mm -hmm. From right. there, everything else can be further clarified. Yeah, I mean, I I voted for the uh, uh, tree list because frankly I don't think it's as easy as we might have presumed. Huh. Uh, but I would I would have thrown mission before engagement plan just because I, I, I agree with you Lily that uh, we, yeah we got to figure that part out and the existing one is not good. The what is? The existing statement is not good. Yeah, yeah. okay so ha can I put it on next week's agenda and we just start hammering you know we might be able to get it in one meeting. I'm certainly happy to come forward with some suggested language. I'll give it some thought doesn't mean you know I'm not uh, wet to it. Can we all do it? Yeah yeah we could do that. I mean, it's yeah, we can go around and each read our mission. Or, or even if we don't want, I mean, mission statements are famous for wordsmithing and, you know, 
becoming generic, meaningless pieces. So you know, I'm probably just going to do some some bullets or something instead of worrying about verbs. Yeah, I hate group editing. It's, yeah. it's the most painful process that I can put myself through. So I, I'd, <laughs> I'd rather have us like bring forward our ideas. We can pull out some ideas we like, and then uh, one of us can go back and have a shot at. How about if we just post our current mission on a Google Drive doc, and then between now and our next meeting, we can all. Um, I think that's a violation of yeah. the open meeting. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. right. But everyone can come to the next um, meeting with right. suggestion mission statement language. OK. Um, all right, so these are, these are our top. So the only thing that didn't make it on here was the nursery. And I think we decided that's kind of a down the road thing to work on later in the year. That's why I didn't put it up there. Yeah. Well, Andrew's not here to speak for himself, but he had he had put that on there for a 2016 goal. So I, I you know, he's not at the table tonight, and you know, he's not here. But that that was that was his suggestion. But none of us none of us chose it. So I think that makes well one person. Did. I'm not oh, saying no. it's not important to me. Right. Yeah. No, it's not important right. to me now. In 2016. No, I hear. Right now. Yeah, I thought we were going to revisit in June. Was it, was it June? Or? Yeah. Yeah. Summer. June. And I, and I think that until we revisit it and decide we want to pursue it, then it can't really be a priority. Okay. All right. That's a good point. And I think our mission in things are going to change as the group changes too. Yeah. But I I put mine for the for the uh, I don't know what we call it in the thing. Minutes, but uh. Okay, and then I'm gonna really wrap this up because Maryland's had no time. Right. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the comprehensive ordinance protection plan and the guidelines for the public shade tree, I think those are things we really they're gonna take a lot of time. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to spend the time on them to get them. And I think while we have this group together, we should do that. I, I would agree with that ordinance, to, to me, is extremely important because it's going to be something that's going to be a working document that I can utilize for enforcement. Mm -hmm. And uh, the next uh, commissioners and the next tree warden can, you know, that as times change and the environment changes, the regulations change, that would change as well. But I think having that backbone, because sometimes I actually feel like when I'm out in the field trying to enforce things or communicate with residents about issue, the only ordinance, the only document I have is MGL Chapter 87. So I can tell them that, you know, we have a $90 per caliper inch uh, replacement uh, value for trees that are put down for the shade tree, but then I don't really have any legal backing. If it's a policy, it can be challenged. If it's an ordinance, it can't be challenged. Mm -hmm. It's the law. Mm -hmm. so. And ordinance take a long time to go through the city system. They so, do. you know, the sooner we start, the better. Okay. Um, we're, we're done with this. Thank you. So I just want to summarize that I have as our um, top four uh, priorities. Tree inventory, ordinance, mission statement, public engagement plan. And guidelines. That's not our top four. Um, we moved the mission to, oh, we moved it? I mean, they're not our top four. That is, I mean, I can make it number five, but. Um, I think we're going to work on it, but I don't think it's going to take that much time. I think we still have the top four plus that. Okay. All right. Arbor Day. Um, I just wanted to. Marilyn, I just yes. wanted to um, share with you that Rich and I, we meet every other week off weeks. Oh. And um, we were talking about this, and for the plantings, we thought that it would really be nice and um, create a, lot, a nice buzz if we did um, a good number of those plantings at the local public schools mm -hmm. um, and engage, engage the classes in some way. Mm -hmm. So um, I, you know, I wanted to throw that out there. I remember Richard mentioned it at the last meeting, and then we talked about it further. And before, you know, anybody reaches out to the schools, I just wanted to bring it back and see how people feel about that. 
I just have one recollection that every Arbor Day event I've had in the city, the schools have been off that day. So there's some holiday or something. Oh, really? Um, and so down. Smith School has never been able to participate because of that. That's, uh, so we might look into the date. Okay. Okay. Let's see. April tax day. These are reasons to have Arbor Day on Arbor Day. Yeah, we don't necessarily. There is some leeway there. There is definitely. Maybe it's spring break or something. The 15th, Saturday or something. Okay, well, let me. 22nd. Let me just go over what we've got so far as review and to bring Mira into the loop. Um, so, I have five categories right now that we're working on volunteer help, tree distribution, tree planting, educational events, and school involvement. So in terms of volunteer help, uh, there were 55 survey respondents who said that they'd like to help with Arbor Day, and I'm gonna be reaching out to those folks. And also, Rob and Jen uh, like to work with you in terms of following up with those who helped with the fall tree planting. Mm -hmm. So we have a big pool of volunteers. Um, for tree distribution, um, Rich said- That's uh, whip distribution, you mean, right? Like the whips? Yep, yeah. 400 whips. Mm -hmm. um, and at our last meeting, uh, we each had one of these. Mm -hmm. did, did anybody um, come up with any? Yeah, Andrew did and I did. Okay. I don't know if anyone else, they were supposed to send the information to Rich. Uh, the order deadline is April 15th, so we have some time, but the sooner the better to ensure selection. Is there anything that we need to do, uh, Rich, in terms of the um, reserving the front of City Hall? No, okay. I'll, I'll take care You're of that. You're all set with that? Yeah. Okay, uh, for tree planting, um, all right, so we're gonna focus on the local schools, public schools. Mm -hmm. Okay, is Smith Vogue in that category? Well, we're gonna start with the elementary schools and, the, and, uh, and see how far we get with that, because did you find out whether or not? Yeah, because uh, the Patriots Day is the 18th, which is Monday. Arbor Day is the 22nd, so that's the league school vacation. Okay. Huh. Uh, that's not a big deal, though. We could just, you know, we could do the event the following Monday, or, you um, know. You can, but you will have bare root trees, so you have to think about that. Yeah, so we'll schedule it. Yeah. We could also, we could also see if, uh, well, I guess, I, I'm actually wondering if we want, actually want to do it during school time, or rather we'd rather do it on a weekend and just coordinate it. That makes sense? Good. We talked about doing both, too, a, a Friday, Saturday, or we could do a Saturday, Monday. The problem with doing it without, without it's good to have, because this, the teachers can actually get it, or the principal can actually, in a sense, gather, get all bunch of students together from each grade, and actually have one planting with the group of kids. Or have a class sponsor a tree planting, or something. and that's why it's good to do it when the kids are at school. So, because a lot of times people, some people will come back, but a lot of people mm -hmm. won't. Plus, there won't be any teachers, there won't be any educators there at any time. So, the whole goal really is to do it. Arbor Day planting is to really talk about Arbor Day and what it means, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and the implications for the folks that are in okay. the industry. So, I, I think yeah. it would be good to do it during school time if we could do so. So, I'm thinking if, if each of us. Um, and Mira, will you be available? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I mean, that that's, you know, our committee and then all these other volunteers. I mean, we could really distribute far and wide in the city. So some people could be handing out the whips, some people could be helping with the planting with somebody, some people could be doing uh, school events. And um, Jay, regarding the educational events, um, we, we had talked in a, previous meeting back in December, was it, or early January, about co-coordinating co with Smith. Um, were you able to find out anything about that? Well, we're, we're putting together our stuff now. Okay. We're getting some outside speakers to come in. Hmm. But what day is that happening? We haven't come we haven't decided. Yet. Okay. So is it okay to piggyback on that, Jay? I think we can work that out, yeah. That would be great. I'd yeah. like to do a thing to kind of show people the whole process that at least that we go through at Smith from mm -hmm. st you know ordering our seed from a seed catalog and starting seed or getting them from you know just show them how different we do it and, and uh, mm -hmm. show them the nurseries and the process and mm -hmm. I don't know how to I haven't figured out how 
that's all going to work, yeah. Okay. What sort of time frame do you feel like is realistic? Like in the next month, what, what might we know regarding Smith's event? And we should have it down by the end of the month. By the end of February? Okay. Yeah. And um, in terms of literature to distribute, we had talked about perhaps that. Um, what sort of things might we like to distribute, not to create a lot of paper, but is there anything that we want to hand out other than the information about the WIPs? There's a lot of, um, if you're doing stuff with educators, there's a lot of, if you just go to the Arbor Day Foundation, there's these like, Tree kits and you know you know that are geared to you know elementary school and I don't know if I don't I don't know if we contacted the instructors you know they could you could say here's a list you can look online is this something you're interested in or or they could produce them I I don't know so we aren't coming up with wads of paper and you know. I mean, so are you saying we refer people to the Arbor Day or contact the Arbor Day and maybe get um, something in particular for distribution? Um, my first thought was refer. I'm not yep. wedded to any one thing, but mm -hmm. refer the in, you know the teachers to that. I guess ahead of time we could say, would this? Do you want us to try to get this stuff, or you could? You know, I don't. Some of it costs money, and some of it doesn't. Mm -hmm. And let's also think about what we realistically, right, you know, can, can handle. Yeah. Um, one of the things I wanted to bring up is, I don't know if the rest of you read the Citizen Forrester, uh, you know, that's put out by DCR this, this month, but it talked about how um, a, a potential uh, event that municipalities can put on as part of Arbor Day is ash tree tagging as a way of, of um, raising awareness about trees that could be at, you know, at some point at risk for the ash, the ash tree borer, the ash. Emerald ash borer. Thank you. Um, and oh, it says, let me just cool. read it to you. It says, um, it says, uh, if you have ash trees in your town and want to raise awareness about the impact of emerald ash borer, the Mass Department of Agricultural Resources is now offering free tree tagging kits mm -hmm. to interested groups. The kits come with tags printed on durable, highly visible green material, flagging tape to tie them onto trees, and a tip sheet to get the most out of your tagging efforts. This type of outreach has been used in several other states with great success. To submit a, a request for a free kit, use this form. And this is, this is what it looks like. Yeah, that'd be cool. You know, it's just, it's just a, a little information sheet that, that you tie onto the tree. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it, it would be an interesting other kind of, you know, because I feel like so many people associate Arbor Day with just planting new trees. And w one focus I feel like we've always sort of lacked in the city is focus on maintenance and focus on care of existing trees. Um, and this is just a, a really powerful educational tool. First of all, most people don't know what an ash tree looks like. And second of all, they don't know that we're at risk of a, of a devastating um, parasite decimating 9% of our tree population um, and what to do about it. So what do folks think about that as a, a potential educational slash volunteer activity? I like that idea because in addition to handing out information about planting, which would be with the whips, this could be about maintenance of existing trees and just that piece of public awareness. A third thing that I thought we might be able to distribute um, if we can do this between now and then is even create a little brochure about the tree commission because I think a lot of people mm. don't still don't know that they exist. Well, that would be the place to I mean, it could just be like a little, you know, right. trifold, yeah. and you know, we'll have our new mission that we're going to craft and. Um, some information about what we've done in our first year, what we're planning to do this year, our names, just mm -hmm. something simple. I like even, that. Even I, just a postcard. I like to actually you know, I like yeah. to take that and actually put that in the water and sort of like, mm -hmm. yeah. talk, talked about that at a, uh, yeah. meeting, uh, a staff meeting about uh, put it in the water and sewer. Put it in people's water and sewer bills yeah. because not, not, not every person gets email, not every person is going to pick up a flyer, but they're going to pay their bills. Yeah, right. Okay. So, what we hope. 
Um, we, we need to wrap up this portion. I'm sorry that it got cut so badly, but it sounds like we have some ideas. We're, we're going to be collaborating with Smith in some capacity. Um, would we ship? Marilyn, do you want to, or do you want me to reach out to schools to see about um, I, uh, their interest in having trees planted, their students helping with having trees planted around Arbor Day, and maybe ask you know, the principal, what what would be, maybe suggest that following Monday? I mean, I'm just looking at the closest possible day to, to, to Arbor Day that they, that they have school. Okay, yeah, because I'd love if, any, if everybody could have some hand in this, so um, if you want to do that piece, that'd be awesome. Um, okay. So Jay, you'll follow up with the Smith thing. Uh, I'll work with Jay and Jen about volunteers. Is there anything in particular you'd like to do, Todd? You don't have to, but is there anything that of oh, <laughs> <is there> particular <laughs> interest? <laughs> I don't have to. I'm not here for that day. Oh, that's right. You're going to be away. Okay. But but I, I do have an idea. Yes. Which I can, which I can do, which wouldn't happen on that day. You know how there's the ice art festival and the sidewalk right. uh, mm -hmm. art yeah. festival. Uh, I was wondering if this would be a potential way to coordinate with either a the chamber and or the uh, downtown Northampton Association to have kind of a guerrilla uh, tree art thing Ooh. in downtown Northampton and or Florence where you, we ask area artists to whatever, you, you know, put a sculpture or a temporary sculpture or something representing a tree at a spot where you wish there was a shade tree. That'd be oh, awesome. I like that. Wow. I don't like yeah. the idea of turning them into Christmas trees because I I pulled yeah. off so much of that like knit art from from trees. Oh my god! But people people sort of like um, art bomb a tree and, and oh, no, hang no, no, no. lots of things from it. No, not an exit like where there should be where one, like be. you know something out of whatever okay. they come. Well, up and with. you also That's showed cool me. Idea. Remember, you captured yeah. a photograph um, yeah. of someone who had, like chalked out the, the shadow of a tree. No, that was actually a poured was concrete. It? That was a city-sponsored art project in New York where. It was an, a, uh, a new shade tree was planted, and then the city sponsored a piece of art, which was actually a concrete pour with an engraving of a permanent uh, oh, sure. sh shadow oh, of the oh, tree. Okay. All right. Wow. So, do you do you feel like you want to undertake this aspect of this? Play? I can certainly, uh, yeah. you know, these things cost money, but you know, I can. I'll talk to the ISA art folks and oh, see right. how that moves, and I can see what we can do in the right. next two months. That's a cool idea. That's a cool All right, idea. and then whip distribution. Is there somebody who wants to? Uh, is that mostly a DPW rich thing, or is there somebody that wants to be the main organizer of whip distribution? One of the next things I'm going to do, um, just in terms of roles, just so we have everything covered and involvement, is um, just list all the different the tasks that need to be done and, and have people have take some level of ownership or involvement. And also just, I'll do something with um, availability, to, just to see who's available for what days. Because I remember last year you did something like that with me. Yeah, this this feels like this could go on a spreadsheet, a Google Docs spreadsheet. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, All right, just a clarifying question. So last time we talked about, there's seven schools here in Northampton, four elementary, one middle, one high school, one vocational. So are we in agreement? We're, we're just gonna focus on the four elementary? Can we start with them? So start with them, okay, yeah. And Rich, you're, well, I have you also down for the uh, fifth grade drawing contest. Is That's already been submitted. Is there anything that needs to be done no, with that? It's a, I've already sent them all the, e the email that I crafted the link. But in terms of collecting those pieces and posting them? No, what, they're, what, they, what they will they do, do they will do that and then they will pick a winner and then that will be for the school and that will be sent to uh, DCR and then DCR will decide. But in terms of the display that we had last year, uh, is that something that they'll put together or that we, does we somebody actually, need to we do We actually that? put that display together last year. Mm -hmm. We okay. did. So we have... Uh, so somebody will need to do that piece. Okay. Because we're probably going to do it again. Um, okay. I don't have to pursue this ash tree tidying if folks don't are no, like warm about it. How do I think it's a good. I think it's okay. Good. All right, then I'll pursue that. Yeah. Really? All right. Yeah. All right. So I'm gonna have to move us along. So um, I want to just have a um, rich. You, uh, we're on other business now, and you wanted me to circle back to the debrief of Felix Lufkins. Yeah, just 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 a, just a couple of things. 
Uh, just to talk about the Ar Arbor Day events before I forget, the mayor's office is actually going to put a pro uh, proclamation together. And so um, Cindy Murphy from the mayor's office asked me if we were going to have specific um, things that we're going to be doing for Arbor Day. So it would be nice to have something in concrete uh, summary so I could actually give it to her so we could actually. When do you need that by? Uh, well, I would like to give it to her probably, probably Friday if possible. Oh, this week? Yeah. A summary of what we're thinking about doing for yes. Arbor Day? All right. Yes. But of course, the proclamation can be changed if it doesn't, so things don't happen. So she's going to draft it, and then she can t delete things, take things out of it. For example, if the if the Ashtray tagging thing doesn't work out, there's no volunteers, okay. or if there's not enough, uh, you know, interest in the schools, which I don't think that'll be a problem. I think you'll find interest in planting trees. Okay, great. So I just want to make sure that's in there. That's an important piece for us as well because it gets read. Uh, at the city council meeting, and I'll have to figure out which meeting that is. And if you want to be present, mm -hmm. uh, we should, we should okay. probably think about attending if you can. Okay. Is that, should some of that Smith stuff be on there too? Yeah. Uh, because that is not part of, I don't know, that's a good question. I can if ask the city's that question. invited to go to it? Yeah, that, that's yeah. a possibility. Let me find out. All so, right. Um, I, don't, I don't think I'll have the info by then. Okay. Just a couple of things about uh, what Felix was just talking about to circle back. So, one of the issues that we have is that some of the properties that he's planted on don't all belong to the city. For example, the uh, the rail trail that does not belong to the city. So, where he's planted those uh, small trees between Veterans Field and the Ramos parking lot. National Grid can come through there and tell us that all those trees have to be pulled out because they have their uh, 23,000 KV bolt wires above there. And obviously they're very high up, but there's no plantings allowed underneath them. So I'm surprised the National Grid hasn't caught that. Mm -hmm. That's that's one thing. So giving permission for them to plant on those types of, um, on, on that type of area. I thought another place would be, for example, which was a hot bed of contention was uh, behind Acme Automotive. Mm -hmm. where there were a bunch of trees that were removed and you know national grid is willing to put a screen back there but they will pick the the plants that go there because they have a list that they use for you know underwire planting um so that's kind of i think felix is all well intended absolutely and i embrace what he's trying to do but i think the problem is, is that he hasn't really been managed very well uh, from the cities and they've just kind of said sure you can plant this here we don't you know, no one's really following up with them to say, what are you planting and how many more plantings are you going to have? So that's one of the things I wanted to bring up. Um, the ownership of the properties is the other issue. So far, as far as it goes for the, uh, the tree warden, I don't really have any jurisdiction over the parking lots because the parking commission has not given me the jurisdiction. It's basically a technical matter. They have to actually write a letter. So the, so the land that's on the back of the sidewalk over here may not be mm. considered public right-of-way. Really? It may belong to the city of Northampton, but it's not public right-of-way in regards to what NGL Chapter 87 tells you. So that would be, that's another... Um, Do you want to have jurisdiction over the parking lots? Well, it would, to be honest with you, it would make sense because we, when, we, when it comes to doing tree work in the parking lots, right. we, we do it anyways. So it, it would make, so I need to write a letter to David Pomerantz and I need to write a letter to Henry Mojo mm -hmm. because the Parks and Recreation Commission has to do the same thing because technically I don't have any say as to what happens uh, legally according to MGL Chapter 87 in the in the city parks. Right. But we DPW maintains the city parks, so it's you know leap from a legality standpoint that has to happen. Even though those trees are not covered by MGL Chapter 87, if the, public, if the Parks and Recreation Commission or the park commission wants the tree warden to be responsible, then they have to give their approval. And the other, the final issue is something that I picked up on what Jay said that we never really talked about was the kind of the ongoing maintenance and the appearance of these plantings. Um, and I, and I, the ongoing maintenance has been an issue that we have run into because of what I explained to you when he was here about the fact that we ended up accidentally chopping his plantings down because. As far as I can tell, there is very little maintenance other than on occasion you'll see a big pile of wood chips and then 
you know, two weeks later, the wood chips are all spread out. I don't ever see them. I don't ever talk to anyone about it. So what I'm concerned about is that we are going to have um, somewhat of an unorganized planting, in a sense. That I'm a, and because he doesn't have a maintenance plan, because he doesn't have any staff, because it's done by volunteers, it's kind of they only can maintain them when they, you know, when they're available or when you find someone. So in the interim, it could be months. Uh, the bike path over here would, must have been two or three months during the growing season. I mean, the grass around the plants got to be basically smothered. On. But I don't. It's not the tree commission's concern no. for the yeah. most part. It's a DPW issue. Yeah. Really it, is, it is a yeah. DPW yeah. issue, but I want to make you aware of it because it's if we are going to invite to have some, if we're going to have some kind of symbiosis with them. We have to make sure that all these things right. we spell out. So if he is going to be working with the Public Shade Tree Commission, right. these things are important. I think me. he would, I, I completely agree. I have my own personal experience with Felix because I, he, he created some plantings at growth food site where he gross, that he grossly neglected. And we have the same issues. So I see, I see Felix very well intentioned. He's very ambitious in a quantitative way. Mm -hmm. Um, and so he's just entropic. It just like keeps going out and going out, expanding, and he's not he's not doing the hard work maintaining. So, I my thought was that, um, you know, he 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 can bring onto our radar some fruit and nut trees that we might want to consider as setback plantings or potentially as as underwire plantings or whatever. Um, but if he were to do, if he or his group were to do any volunteer work, it would be under our <coughs> wing. And by when I say our, I really mean the city of Northampton. Right. I guess the so reason. So if I if I gave the impression that I wanted to like link link hands arms with him, I that was a misimpression. Okay. I just want to I just want to make sure that if we decide to do some kind of or you if you decide to do some kind of a joint venture with him, yeah. that we just make sure we address these issues. That's yeah. all. And I think you're correct, Todd, that the, the present conditions that we have are really a city matter and a department matter, uh, public works and yeah. uh, central services. So we have to kind of put our collective heads together and try to, that's why I asked him for a planting plan yeah. to see what he has out there and any future plantings he's planning mm -hmm. on putting out there um, because necessarily the central services, they really don't, the grounds is really low on their priority list. It's really about the structures, the infrastructure, the buildings, the parking lots and the parking garages. Uh -huh. But yeah, and I, and I envision it more definitely around the fruit tree side where, I mean, he has access to hundreds of free trees. And, you know, being able to uh, incorporate those in our process and putting them under, you know, in certain locations that we dictate, but, you know, with his cooperation and the maintenance of that is not, you know, not then, really then, it's on, then it's on the city at that point right. because it's a, yeah. it's a public tree. Yeah. There are some new interesting ways to grow them, like a uh, fruiting wall mm -hmm. that would take not take up a lot of space, but provide a lot of fruits in a smaller area. Uh -huh. Okay, but it is six o'clock, and I always vow to get you guys out of here on time. So, um, can you do a, like a two-minute um, to-do recap? Oh yes. Wow. Okay. The only thing I wrote down was Richard's going to look into vehicle. The issue about uh, vehicle damage to trees yep. and the insurance coverage. Yep. Um, I was kind of spacing out. Did, was there anything else? I'm going to order the ash tagging kit. That's I'm right. I'm going to contact the school. Um, Jerry's going to try to pin down the Smith College. You're right. Um, you know, details. Todd's going to look into potentially an art installation Tree. project for Arbor Day. Maryland's sending uh, most of the Arbor Day events to Rick, right? Yes. Friday? Yeah, Possibly. Yeah, the summary. Use the summary bullets is fine. And I'm going to send the spreadsheet to really uh, distribute to us. Um. Oh, and we're all going to look at the mission. Oh, yes, we're all going to think about mission statement. If you want to know what our current mission statement is, just go to the city's website for the Tree Commission, and you'll see that, um, click the tab or the, the link that says Charter. Okay, I got all that. I'll post those to my to-do list. Thing. Thank you. All right, motion to adjourn. Make a motion. Sorry.